Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to session one. This is session number one of Pokemon Spectrum, which is our brand spanking new tabletop campaign. Um, not to be confused by another fan-made game called Pokemon Spectrum. Uh, to be perfectly honest, I named this campaign before I knew that such a thing existed. So if you're here to look look for uh, Pokemon Spectrum gameplay, that's this is not it. I'll probably put a link somewhere where you can find that. But if you're here for the tabletop campaign, welcome. And um, I wanted to, we, we've already introduced uh, all of our players in our session zero. So um, if you have time, I would highly recommend that you check out our session zero first. Uh, just so that you get a great handle on who the characters are, who the players are, before you actually start the campaign proper. And then you can come back here um, to actually start the campaign officially. So, as always, uh, for those of you who are used to my campaigns, we're going to start with the warm-up question. <laughs> so, um, the warm-up question that I have for today is... Um, this is going to be answered as a player, not in character. Nor most of the warm-up questions are are out of character, by the way. Um, tell us a little bit about what is the major similarities and differences that you have with your character, what you personally have. What what do you see as the major similarities, and what are the major differences between you and your character? Probably biggest similarity is we both tend to be a little OCD perfectionist of, but I need it organized in just such a way. And if it's not my whole day, you don't understand. Uh, greatest dissimilarity. I would say she's probably much more pulled together fashion, makeup hair wise. I will, I will wash my hair. I will brush it. I will hope for the best. Okay. So I guess one of our biggest similarities would just be our like feelings towards our family. Um, I think family is super important. And while my family situation certainly differs from Cassie's, um, I think that we both value family very much. Um, as far as what's really dissimilar is I think that she is uber independent compared to me. Uh, I think that, like, I, I mean, granted this is the Pokemon universe, so you have 10 year olds going off on their own, um, but I could not do that nearly to the same extent, I don't think, so there's mine. Uh, for me, uh, the, the biggest similarity between me and myself and Molly is that we're both uh, pretty sarcastic and we're both, uh, we both uh, try to have funny things to say. Like I have, I have a little uh, kind of my grab bag of funny stuff <laughs> that I can apply to different situations. But um, <clears throat> yeah, so that's, we, I think we have a similar sense of humor. But uh, the biggest dissimilarity is the fact that I wrote Molly as being um, being uh, uneducated, which means she doesn't read well. Whereas I read, I read very fast. I, I read a lot. Uh, I think I average maybe one book every two weeks, if that. So I think that's the biggest difference between us. So yeah, I think uh, similarities would be the evasiveness, uh, strangely enough, which is why this was a difficult one for me to go, mm, do I, what do I say? Do I just invent something else? Nah, I'm just going to be honest. So I'm pretty evasive with people in life. Part of it is introvert. Part of it is just I like avoiding drama. And so I find that's like a hindrance for me. But on the cross, the cross point of that is that... Um, I'm very comfortable in social environments. So I, I always, like I say, I'm I'm like the most extroverted introvert anyone will ever get to know, you know, and I, I don't think Chase is that. I think Chase is like, no, he's an introvert, right? And he's uh, he's very much all to himself. So yeah, that'd be it. The biggest similarity, I have to say, family. Um, and this, the way she cares about her brother is very similar to the way I care about my brother, except for... She's probably a bit strong, stronger of a, of a protective person than me. That's probably the biggest difference. And she has psychic powers. I don't have psychic powers, unfortunately. So. Okay. Awesome. Thank you, guys. So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the world of Pokemon. This world is inhabited by creatures called Pokemon. For some people, Pokemon are pets. Others use them for fights. 
Your very own Pokemon legend is about to unfold. A world of dreams and adventures with Pokemon awaits. So let's go. Now that is the introduction that Professor Oak normally tells people. Yes, I love how sure is going to shrinking you guys down. That is the spiel that Professor Oak normally tells uh, young Pokemon trainers when they're going about on their Pokemon adventure. For you guys, however, this is more of a day-to-day -day slice of life kind of thing. We are in the region of Kanto. The Pokemon universe that you guys are in, uh, as I had explained before, is going to be based on the video game lore or the video game adventures. Um, but it is going to be an alternate universe. So while I'm going to try to keep as many things as canon as possible, true to the canon, I might have a few variations and you'll probably see that very quickly, especially since the whole theme of this game is going to be more grounded on real life the way that we know it, except for the fact that there's Pokemon running around. Now Pokemon, as we know, come in all different shapes and sizes. They have a lot of very fantastical abilities. This makes them both very interesting and fascinating creatures, but at the same time, it also makes them very dangerous. The region of Kanto, the biggest difference you're going to be you're going to find in this universe is that there it is surrounded by a ginormous wall. The wall was created many years ago, um, shortly after the people of Kanto settled here. Um, Pokemon Rangers are stationed around the borders of the wall to make sure that only regulated Pokemon are allowed to pass through the borders. Many Pokemon out in the wild are very, very, very dangerous, if you were to believe many of the Pokedex entries from the video games. So only certain types of Pokemon are allowed past the borders of Kanto. Um, and pretty much if you leave the border of Kanto, you're putting yourself at risk to the wilds outside with all of these fantastical creatures. There are many ways that this border is maintained. Obviously, the government is tries to make sure that they keep the Pokemon that shouldn't be here out in the most humanely way as possible. Um, but there's a lot of bureaucracy. Many people have different opinions about these borders, and some people feel like feel like the Pokemon should be free to roam around. Others are like, are you crazy? <laughs> no. Do you know how many, with our 10-year-olds like running around for this po po Pokemon League, you'd be nuts to let so-and-sos. Like, I think Riz was saying the other day that my cargo's body goes up to like 8,000 degrees or something like that. Something ridiculous like that. So it's pretty much for the safety of the people that certain Pokemon um, are allowed on the borders. There are some Pokemon that can be brought into the borders um, as long as they are registered um, and as long as um, the owner agrees to the associated regulations to make sure that that Pokemon stays safe from everybody else and keeps everybody as safe from it, okay? So, that just gives you a little bit of background of the world in and of itself. Now we're gonna zoom in a little bit closer. So, those of you who've been in my campaigns before know what's coming up next. Origin stories. Everybody, roll initiative. Now while people are rolling initiative, I'm just going to explain to everybody at home that uh, we are going to be following um, the uh, Pokemon Tabletop United. So if you want to see the source material for Pokemon Tabletop United, you can look down in the links below. We are homebrewing a few things, and that does include the initiative. We just talked about how we're going to do initiative. Normally initiative is just your speed. We wanted to add a little bit of randomness to it so that the people with the low speed weren't stuck always being last, and the people with the high speed weren't stuck always being first. So we're basically taking everybody's speed and multiplying it by a D3, or taking D3 and based on your speed. Several D3s based on your speed. So let's take a look and see what we've got here. Okay, so we've got Roma at 13. 
We got Shay at 22. We got Ella at 12. We got Riz at 12. Um, we have Petra. Do I not see her? Oh, Tiffany is at 10. Ella and Riz are tied. Who has the higher speed? I have seven. I also have seven. Okay. Have you, I will have you guys break the tie by rerolling. Then, okay. please reroll yeah. just to see who breaks the tie. <laughs> Eleven for Riz. Oh, Seventeen. 17. Okay. Okay. Act one. Shay. Shay, we're going back to your childhood. Mm -hmm. This is, you are at a relatively new, clean building. This is the orphanage. Roughly how old are you, would you say? I'd say 10. You're about 10 years old. Okay. You're in Whitestone Orphanage. Um, you pretty much have been semi taken care of or owned by the government, I guess, since you were really young. Um, I don't think you really have any knowledge of your parents, per se. Um, you're the new kid. Uh, many of the... There's a relatively friendly female uh, woman who, you know, takes you uh, into this room where there's a little playground. Um, and she, you know, she sort of like has her hand on your shoulder and um, there's like a sandbox on one side, there's like a small jungle gym kind of thing on another side, uh, seesaws, swings, the whole shebang, um, and this playground. There's a lot of kids that are playing it right now, and, um, the, uh, woman, um, looks down towards you and, and says, we think you're going to be very happy here. There's a lot of friends here over at Whitestone. Uh, orphanage. Uh, she like looks down to us, waiting to see if you would respond at all. Okay. No response. He said, well, why don't you go out and play with some of the kids? Uh, snack time will be at, uh, at three o'clock, she says. And uh, with that, she will turn around and uh, leave. So how many kids on the yard, would you say? I would say there's about a dozen kids, a dozen kids. And here. where are most of them like playing? Just where's the biggest cluster of, of joy? I would say the biggest cluster of joy is definitely in the jungle gyms. It's right. also the larger portion of the playground. So like the jungle gym slash swing area and slide area. So definitely don't go there. Definitely um, don't go there. Don't go there. Um, is there any kid that might be alone or? Yep. Separated from the crew? There is. So I'll slowly approach um, an isolated child. You'll slowly approach the isolated child. There's an isolated child that's currently in the sandbox. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll step into the sandbox, but I won't, I won't like kneel down or sit down or play. Just, just kind of step in there and, and look down at the child and see if, if they look back at me. Molly Moon, you're in the sandbox. You're the child in the sandbox. How different are you in ages, by the way? I think one of you is like two years younger than the other, I believe. I'm 20, 24, 24 in the campaign. 24 in the campaign, and you're 22, right? 22. So you're eight years old right now, Molly. <clears throat> you actually arrived um, at the orphanage yesterday. Okay. This is before you ended up with your foster parents, obviously. Okay. So you arrived at the orphanage yesterday. Um, one of the uh, Jennies actually uh, had found you out in the streets. Um, and apparently they did some checking and the, the people that were supposed to be taking care of you um, basically pretty much took, the, took the, the foster money and ran with it. Like, which unfortunately is something that actually happens in real life. That Jesus. people become foster parents 
because not because they actually want to take care of children, but because they want the money for it. So you were pretty much abandoned, unfortunately, by the first bunch of foster parents. Um, you most likely those foster parents have probably been charged um, for abandonment and various other things. You, as an eight-year-old child, I don't think really was worrying about that or thinking about that. But anyway, Officer Jenny uh, dropped you off there at the orphanage the day before, and I don't think that Molly necessarily became fast friends with anybody either. But now there is this boy, roughly two years older than you, who's approaching you with the sandbox. And just so that we know, Molly, what would you be doing in the sandbox, this eight-year-old girl right now? I think she's she's just kind of sitting at the edge of the sandbox, not really building anything, just kind of holding some sand in her hand and watching it kind of go through her fingertips. Just going, going, just kind of, and she keeps picking it up and just keeps watching it go down. Okay. Go. Uh, Hi. Hi. Molly kind of looks up and looks back down and hi have you been here for a long time just got here yesterday so you haven't you haven't met anyone else yet either the jenny was nice the jenny Mm -hmm. who who is the jenny She's, Molly's just kind of only half paying attention. She's kind of starting to draw in the sand with one of her fingers. Yeah, the Jenny. I, I, sit, I sit down on the edge of the sandbox. Is there anything specifically that uh, Molly is drawing or she's just doodling? Just kind of little swirls. So... So what are you thinking about right now? If uh, you seem to be pretty distracted with the sand, are you thinking about where you came from? I can't remember exactly. Um, so the, there were people and they're gone now and now I'm here. Yeah, they're, so, they're, they're gone now. Well, I, I don't remember much either. I don't I don't know if that's I don't know if I actually forget though. I don't know what's actually happening. I don't remember much either. So maybe we have more in common than than it seems. Molly kind of looks up and really notices him for the first time. She stops she stops drawing and she says, What's your name? My name is Iam. Iam? Yes. My my father's name was William. Uh, I, that's all I know about my dad, actually. And I don't even kinda, know if that's his real name. <clears throat> she kind of drops drops the sand, brushes her hands. And, well, I'm I'm Molly. Nice to meet you, Molly. If, if you don't mind, we don't have to play together or be friends, but it just might might be a, more comfortable if we just pretend and just hang out with each other so that the other kids don't make fun of us. The other kids don't talk to me. I don't talk to them either. You don't need to talk to me either. We just have to maybe stick by each other. She picks up another handful of sand, kind of goes back to it. And I pick up uh, some sand as well and I I let it fall between my my hand to another hand, like, as if it's like a, like a sand, um, what's it called, a sand clock? Just kind of thinking about passage of time and, um, and then I just, I let the sand go and I stand back up. I don't leave the sandbox, the perimeter of the sandbox, but I get back up and walk to the outside of the sandbox. All right, you go ahead and walk to the other side of the sandbox. 
Roll, roll uh, perception, the two of you, please. Six. Six for me. Yep. And for Molly, also a six. All right. I'll say that um, as you guys are just hanging on the sandbox, off the corner of your eye, you do notice that a group of kids um, who were, again, playing at the hand on the jungle gym, there's a group of them that are sort of started gathered together, and you can't help... They're, they're, they're kids, so they're not making this very discreet, but uh, they're sort of semi-staring slash talking amongst themselves while they're staring at you and Molly at the sandbox. Sandbox, uh, Chase and Molly in the sandbox. Um, and they they kind of have this this sort of mean girls look of their faces if that if you know what I'm talking about this mean girl look on their faces as they're as they're uh, chatting with each other you can't you can't hear anything that they're saying that but whatever they're saying it's probably not you know complimenting you on your outfits <laughs> I look at Molly to see if she uh, notices she did and she just ignores them like blatantly looks up shows that she's seen them and then looks back and chase will walk to the side of the sandbox that's between molly and the group and um just stand there and stare at them all right i don't say anything but i stare at them all right you stare at them one of the uh one of the kids uh it's a boy with like jet black hair long jet black hair uh, looks like he might be like the leader of the, this group of kids. And uh, he in particular, his eyes meet yours. And uh, there's just this look of, I wouldn't say utter contempt, but he's definitely sizing you up. And the gears, looking through his eyes, like the gears are churning and you're not thinking that his appraisal of you is very high when he's sizing you up. <laughs> so I, I give I give a nod. Part of the nod is an acknowledgement that I'm aware that he's sizing me up. Another part of the nod would be I'm I'm a, I'm ready for whatever it is you're wanting to say or do. I'm I'm inviting. Okay. When he notices that, uh, him and several of the kids in the group start to approach you. Uh, there's probably six... No, uh, there's probably about six kids. Five, we'll say five. Five kids are starting to gather. The other, the other uh, six kids are like starting to notice this, but they're, half of them are either not paying attention or half of them are paying attention but not like moving from their spot. Like people swinging or people seesawing. And uh, one of the, uh, the, 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 the kids walk over and they actually uh, get into the sandbox and start to walk on top of Molly's doodles, like right on top of her doodles. And uh, you know, the, the kid with the jet black hair has his arms folded this kid's probably like, I would say 12. He's probably, he's a couple years older than you. The rest of the kids um, are probably around the ages of 11 or 10 as well. And he's just watching the other kids walking on the sandbox at this point? Uh, or is he in there, is he in there as he's well? He's in there as well, around? he's in there as well with them. The other kids behind him, you know, kind of just trampled all over Molly's drawing on the sandbox. Molly Molly doesn't look up. She just kind of stares at at what just happened. Yeah. And then, then she then she kind of looks up and she says, "You can't see very well, can you?" One of the kids is a girl says, "Who is she talking to? Is she talking to you or is she talking to me?" And then one of the other kids just kind of shrugs a little bit. Molly, Molly looks back down and she says, the ugly one. Yeah. Oh, as soon as you say that, uh, one of the 11-year-old uh, uh, girls uh, like tilts her head a little bit and 
she looks like it, she's about to like lunge towards you, but but the kids next to her like hold her back, and then the guy with the jet black hair, he, he doesn't really respond to what Molly says, and he says, "We're bored of the jungle gym. We're gonna play here now." I step into the sandbox, and I put myself between um, Jet Black there and Molly, but close enough that I'm not, I'm not like physically touching him, but he can definitely feel the heat of my my breath. All right, Jet Black, I think this this area is already claimed. You had your own spot. Maybe we'll get to know each other later on. We'll put this behind us, but right now. You have your play area, we have ours. You need to back up. He says, what are you talking to me like you own this place? He says, you've only been here, what, five minutes? I've been here five minutes and I've, I've already, I've seen what I have to see. I don't need to get to know any of you guys because I don't know if you guys have heard the stories of, I don't know, the Mistravius. I mean, you got some pretty long hair there. One day, maybe you might get it pulled and get scared to death, so. While they're talking, Molly's just kind of picking up handfuls of sand again and just kind of sprinkling it on their shoes. <laughs> One of the kids will probably take notice of it and looks very annoyed by that. So she actually picks up her foot and she kicks some sand into your eyes. It stings really badly um, and your eyes start to water a little bit. And several of the kids who saw, who see this happening starts laughing hysterically. <laughs> uh, she says, now who can't see? So I, uh, I, tr I do a pivot around Jet Black. Um, but I do a pivot with my elbow out, so I, so I can hit the kid who said who can't see. I'm gonna try nice. to uh, stick a foot behind their leg, so when I pivot, um, the intention is to trip them. Okay, yeah, well, but, uh, but unintentionally. Unintentionally. All right. So if you're trying to do it unintentionally, uh, do a per do a guile. Roll a guile for me. <laughs> I haven't had people roll again. 11! Okay, okay. Oh. If you're trying to, I guess, scare the kids off a little bit, would you say would that I, I would let you do roll an intimidate? Uh, I wouldn't do the intimidate yet. Okay. All right. I, I'm, tr I'm trying to make fools of them before just to kind of even okay. the ground. All right. So you semi trip one of the kids. Uh, the kid actually uh, does fall on his on his hiney, um, and some of the other kids gasp like, "Oh snap! Stuff's about to go down!" And then um, Jet Black um, says, "Hey!" And then he kind of he actually forcibly shoves you really really hard, and he's really strong, so hard that you actually fall back, and um, you kind you your head sort of gets knocked on the edge of the sandbox, and um, you actually start to feel a little slightly dizzy. Not to the point that you can't pick yourself up, but disoriented from the impact. And of several people start, all the kids start laughing hysterically, like when you fall into your, fall and hit your head. So I, I woozy, I uh, roll to the side, just feel my head, slightly struggle to get up but I try not to show that I'm dizzy or that it's affected me in any way um, I look at Molly and and I wait till she looks at me uh, acknowledges that I'm I'm kind of being serious when I say the next part is Molly you need to leave the sandbox Molly kind of takes the cue and she stands up and just kind of walks right past all the kids like between like through them and she says it's it's too noisy here she walks over to the other end. Okay, if you're gonna try to walk through them, they're definitely not gonna just let you through. So, um, several of the kids are definitely going to stop you uh, when, unless you'd want to force your way through them. 
So she tries to go through. They just kind of yeah. close off. Okay, so she's kind of barely even acknowledging them, just changes course, goes around. Yeah. You're going to try to do that, but at that point, all of the other kids in the playground have sort of gathered around and sur semi-surrounding you guys. Um, the main five who were there are, you know, moving in unison, making sure that you don't leave the circle. <clears throat> all right. All right. If, uh, if it looks like Molly's not getting out of there, I'll work my way back up to Jet Black, and I'll... I'll just, I'll, I'll lean in and whisper in his ear, if he lets me. He uh, push me back. He'll let you for now. It depends on what you're going to say, but he'll let you for now. I just, uh, so I want to, I want to speak to him, but I want to make sure that the, the least amount of people hear uh, what I'm about to say. So I lean in and I know I'm like, I'm a 10 year old kid, but yeah. my, my thoughts are definitely a little darker than normal. Sure. Um, they come from a place that it like yeah so lean in i say listen up jet black how much do you sleep how much do i sleep everyone sleeps how much do you sleep what kind of a question is that i sleep less like anybody else sleeps i don't know how long i sleep are you a bully when you sleep <laughs> me bully I just said I wanted to play in the playground, in the sandbox. You know where I like to play? I like to play at night. I like to play when people are asleep. Do you know what that means? That means when everyone else is asleep, that's my playground. He... I would roll an Intimidate for that. Definitely would roll an Intimidate for that. He... backs up a little bit. I wouldn't say that his face is completely, like, fearful, but he backs up a little bit, like, hmm. Uh, and with that, uh, Jet Black says, Fine. We didn't really want to play here anyway. Have fun with your sand. Thank you. Molly kind of looks at him and sh she says, so you like to play outside at night? I have trouble sleeping. I play a lot in my thoughts. I think a lot of things. Don't you, you, you don't always need to mean everything you say. Sometimes you just got to say what you got to say in order to move on. So you have a good imagination. Probably more lively than most. I find want my, to imagine, my want to imagine something with me. Sure. Okay, I'll draw something in the sand, and then we can imagine something. Okay. <laughs> she kind of rubs her eyes. There's still a little bit of sand there. Ian, are those guys really strong? The strong ones usually aren't. Hmm. If they're strong, why are they wasting time on me? Sometimes the weak ones are stronger than they think. Just hang in there. I'm sure this will be over soon. When you guys are actually turning in for the night that night, you guys are supposed to, um, one of the first things you do as new people at the orphanage is, is you get to select your, your set of, of towels um, and toiletries, basically, uh, for the, you know, in order to, to, to do your business and stuff. So they'll give you a set of towels that you can choose from. And between Molly and Shay, I would like you to choose between red, blue, and yellow, please. I'll go Molly with red. Kind of Molly, go ahead. Molly kind of uh, looks at them, and she doesn't. She doesn't seem to really care. So okay. she just kind of, without without really looking at it, she just reaches out and grabs one. We'll say so. Chase got red. Mm -hmm. We'll do this randomly. Roll me a roll me a D two and call it. One is this, and yet two is that. Okay. 
Let's do um let's do if I roll a one, I'll I'll choose blue. Okay. Two, you choose yellow. Alright. Okay. Okay. Noir. Let's move on to you. Just to specify, for these origin stories, I'm not necessarily going in chronological order, obviously, especially because I'm having you rolling. So these are just a few scenes back um, that are that are happening um, at an arbitrary point in time. So, Noir, you are currently uh, working as a barista um, in one of the cafes in Saffron City. Uh, there are a few customers right now, you know, um, looking through, uh, trying to either having, you know, a couple. It's probably like just the morning rush just finished, I would say. A lot of people have finally got to work. There's a couple people who are over at some of the tables, you know, chatting. Um, there's a customer who is like looking through some of the uh, gift, gift mugs, I guess, that you guys have in the store. And um, we'll say that one of the one of them like goes up to you and says, "Excuse me, miss." Yes. Um, is um, uh, what do they look like? Are they um, uh, male, female? Probably a female. She's maybe in her mid thirties, mid to late thirties. Um, hello, Menzel. Uh, how may I help you? Before before I continue the role playing, I need to ask uh, Noir. Um, first of all, are you displaying what you should be displaying on your person? Are you displaying it? Uh, yes, just a, probably a rank below what she actually is. Though. Okay, you saw. I'm, I'm assuming you've seen the ranks, the levels, right? Yeah, I think rank three. Is what you're displaying or what you are? It's what she is on paper. Okay, rank three is what she is on paper. So let me, maybe I should take a pause and explain how psychics work in society because I have a lot of things, if, if for those of you who are playing have not seen it, but there's a worksheet or a handout on um, how psychics work in this world. For those of you who watched session zero, you probably got a got a hint of this. But um, psychics make up a small part of the general population, but they are treated with caution. Some people even see them with fear. Studies suggest that psychic ability is hereditary, but it often skips generations. Psychics are placed in one of seven levels. Psychic tests are required of all citizens on an annual basis until the age of 18 to measure the strength of existing psychic powers or discover newly attained ones. After the age of 18, all citizens are required by law to take the test every four years. Level ones have extremely low level of psychic abilities, no telepathy or telekinetic powers, more along the lines of mild empathy towards creatures. Level twos, moderate empathic powers, has mild telepathic or telekinetic powers, but not both. Level 3 has both mild telepathic and mild telekinetic powers, or moderate telepathic or telekinetic powers, but not both. No mind reading or ability to control minds. Level 4 has moderate telepathic and moderate telekinetic powers, or has strong telepathic or telekinetic powers, but not both. Able to read surface thoughts or have mild persuasion. The psychics of this level are monitored, or, or higher are monitored. Level 5 has strong telepathic and telekinetic powers, able to read minds with moderate accuracy, or possess moderate control of minds, but not both. Psychics of this level are moderately monitored. Level 6, moderate mind reading and mind powers, or very accurate mind reading or compelling mind control powers, but not both. Psychics of this level are heavily monitored. This makes up an extremely tiny percentage of all psychics. And then we have the very rare level sevens who have strong mind reading and mind control powers. Psychics of this level are extremely rare, only about a dozen recorded cases throughout all of history. Extreme monitoring of psychics at this level. All psychics must be registered by law. While out in public, they must also clearly display a pin that designates them to be a psychic, including their level, 
The pin, the pin contains a psychic type symbol with a colored ribbon based on level. Red for level ones, orange for twos, yellows for threes, greens for four, blue for five, violet for six, and indigo for seven. That is the entire spectrum of psychic levels. Failure to display a pin results in heavy sp of heavy fine or even incarceration at special psychic facilities. Repeat offenders become branded with the psychic symbol on their forehead to guarantee that they always display their psychic status. Psychics who have abused their powers and have proven to be a danger to society are kept in special psychic prisons. Those who have become rehabilitated may rejoin society on probation, but their pin must also now display a black ribbon for the rest of their lives. Psychics who have proven, on the other hand, to become a positive contributor to society are honored with a special white ribbon that they can display with their pin. So right now, you are wearing a color, you said three, so that would be green. I'm sorry, three uh, is yellow? Yellow, I think. Yes. So um, you have she's a... probably actually a level four or five, I'm not sure, moderate or yes. mild. Yes, so you're fudging things a little bit, that's fine. All right. The uh, woman uh, turns to you and she has a very uh, bright smile on her face, and then um, when she uh, looks down at down at the pin, she's like, "Oh." Uh, then she's she she says a little bit of an "O," oh, but then she qu quickly like uh, shakes it off a little bit, embarrassingly almost, and then says, "I'm um, was wondering. Uh, I have a I have a, a a Groupon." She says, "Buy one mug, get the second one fifty percent off." Uh, does this also? Can this discount also be used on the the water? There's like water bottles there. Can they also be used on the water bottles as well? Um, may I see the grip? Uh, um, the grip on. She'll I'll show, double check the. She'll show detail. it to you on her phone. Okay. Um, do I know if it can? <laughs> um, you believe that uh, it's. Techni technically, it's only good for the mugs only. It doesn't include the um, the water bottles. Technically, um, it appears it doesn't um, allow for the water bottles. Technically, uh, I was hoping to be I'm able sorry, to get the. Is there? I was hoping to get the whole set as a as a birthday present from my mother. Is there anything that maybe you could do to? apply this discount anyway she asks it would be great i would greatly appreciate it if you could uh, i'll see what i can do i can't promise anything um we can't give everyone special treatment otherwise there wouldn't be any of these um bottles left oh i i know i understand uh, it's i'll just... speak with the manager the Thank you, thank you so much. Oh, no problem. Um, can I get you anything to drink or to eat um, while you're waiting? Um, she she looks uh, she looks over up at the uh, at the uh, display and she says, H "How are your smoothies?" Now, personally, uh, the smoothies here you don't think are all that great, but your manager also wants you to sell things. So, what do you do? What season is it? Is it hot? Is it cold? I'll say it's probably spring. It's mid-spring. Okay. Um... Hmm. The smoothies are not as good as our, um... Iced coffees and iced teas, to be honest. Those are a bit more our specialties. I see. I'm not much of a caffeine drinker. We have not caffeinated versions, too. Frappes and such. Um, I, I, I guess if it tastes anything like coffee, I, I, I'd rather not. I, I... Oh, we have chocolate flavored ones. We have strawberry. Chocolate. We also have a nice mango one too. I, it's hard for me to say no to chocolate. Uh, sure. Maybe if there's anything in hazelnut, that would be that would work. We can add some hazelnut essence. Easy. We have plenty. <laughs> Sure. Ring me up a, 
Uh, oh, what do you call the small? I don't know what you what you call it here because they don't they don't call it small, medium, or large here. They call it I don't know something else. A la Starbucks, they call it something else. Oh, we I'll get you up a uh, mini. Thank um, you. There's a, I'll lead you to your table so you can get comfy, and I'll be right back. Thank you. Uh, and also, here's a menu in case you get peckish. She 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 looks very. She gives you a smile and she she goes over to continue looking at the rest of the mugs. After like showing where the table is, she'll wander off, um, put in the orders, um, stop them going, and then Stephanie and she can find the manager. Okay, you're going to find the manager, and um, he is. You go off to, to go find the manager, but um, it seems that he stepped out. There's like a note saying that he had to step out to attend to something, um, which means you're there on your own to make it. You're there on your own for the time being. Okay, so it's no acting manager or anything. Person who would be in charge while the manager's gone? Uh, it would be you if the manager steps out because you're the only one currently working there at the yeah. barista. So it would be you to make that call. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, are, the, are the cups um, very um, more expensive than the mugs if they're just brought? Um, the cups are more expensive, yes. Um, if they're only a few dollars, um, more expensive, nor we'll probably go up to the, the woman and go. Okay. Um, oh, hi. Oh, yes. Did you find the manager? Um, sorry, he stepped out. However, oh. I did. I did recall that the cups are. A little bit more expensive than mugs. However, I believe if you just pay a few dollars along with the, um, the coupon, you can probably get the um, the just the difference between the mug and the cup. Let's say like five pokey dollars or like a three pokey dollars. Um, Whatever the difference is, <laughs> um, and that should cover it because you're still technically getting the same worth out of the coupon. I think it should be fine. If it's not, I'll take it out of my paycheck. Oh, I don't. Just for you. What is? Uh, why don't you go ahead, out of character, roll me a uh, a charm? That wouldn't be really a ch charm oh. slash. I'm using charm as diplomacy basically charm slash diplomacy the opposite yeah. of intimidate so roll a charm uh, uh, eight. Oh, very nice she says oh she says that's really sweet of you to offer but but no i i think that's a very fair deal you ha um and and she she happily hands okay. you the group on and the poker bucks the poker dollars yeah oh i think that's your um drink i'll go get it thank you just hear it and she goes off. But... While she goes off, um, the there's a the bell rings at the door. Uh, there's a little bell that rings every time somebody comes in, and this individual uh, appears. He comes inside. I'd say this is a man who, in real life terms of Indian descent, and uh, he's he he's he's dressed. He's got like a camera strap around a camera on a strap on his um on his neck and uh he's got a uh pen and paper as well as a mercro on his on his shoulder he comes into the to the shop and uh he walks over to you and says excuse me ma'am um yes monsieur can i speak to your manager please oh he's out at the moment um just uh one moment i'll just attend to the customer um as drop things off and I'll be have you have my undivided attention then okay we'll say we'll assume that you go ahead and take care of that one customer um, and then you go back and uh, 
you you told him that your your manager stepped out. Is that what you said? Yeah. Okay. He says, "Oh, uh, well, are you is if the manager stepped out, are you are you I guess the stand-in manager for the time being?" I'm um the I'm looking after the place at the moment. I can um, take a message um, if you leave your number and name. I'm sure the manager will get back to you in person. Sure. Or if it's something I can solve now, I try and make your day good. Sure. He says, I'm Keith Carmel. He hands you a card. I'm a journalist okay, from Almia. I'm sorry. Is it Almia News, uh, Petra? Is it Almia? Almia. Uh, yeah. Almia. I'm I'm Keith Carmel of uh, I'm a journalist from uh, Almia News. I'm working on an article right now. Uh, I'm doing a piece, and uh, I just wanted to talk to real people, real normal yeah. people, about an opinion column of mine. So um, I was going to ask permission if I could interview some of the people here at this shop. Uh, I don't suppose maybe I could ask you some questions for the article too. Of course, um, though not everyone would consider me, um, you know, like normal people. Um, I oh, gesture to like my pin. Don't worry, you're, I, I, I just need people who are not sciencey, techy, or people who are not necessarily in, say, the Pokemon contest. I guess sort of, sort of uh, circle. You're not one of those people, are you? Oh, no, I'm, a, I'm not really aware of that stuff. Okay. Um, when I turned 10, I just entered the workforce. Okay. Well, uh, since you don't have any customers right now, uh, I'll try to go as quickly as possible through some of the questions. Oh. Okay. Would you like something to eat and drink um, while we're um, doing this? Oh, a scone would be really nice. Thank you. Okay. I'll uh, whip one up. Um, do you have any preference? He says, why don't you surprise me? If I like what I have, then I can send one of our uh, food critics here uh, to write a review of the shop. Mm, that would be lovely. Um, do you have an allergy? Just to nuts. Ah. Okay. Well, perhaps not that one. Yeah, it gives me a bad rash. It's okay if it's in the air. It's not airborne allergy, but if I consume it, you know, my throat gets really, get tightens up. Had to be rushed over to the hospital once. It wasn't very, very pleasant. That's awful. Um, we have a nice blueberry. Do you like blueberries? Blueberries, great. Or whatever the polka ber berry version. I feel like all the fruit here is polka berries. So whatever the polka berry version of a blueberry is, I don't remember which one that is, but... Raspberry? Fill that in. Raspberry. Raspberry, yes. I love raspberry. So... <laughs> So here's my question, and, and, and don't worry if all of this sort of goes over your head, but um, my article is on Pokemon, the, on Pokemon genetics, actually, and, and some of the things that have been going on in, in the science world, the advances in Pokemon genetics. Uh, lately, uh, people have been using them to make their Pokemon smarter, faster, stronger, things like that, not only in combat, but also in Poke Pokemon contests as well make their coach shinier and things of that nature. Uh, I, I guess my first question is, what is your thought on people using science to quote unquote improve Pokemon? What is your opinion of that? Well, if it's not harmful um, and the Pokemon uh, give consent uh, and their owners also give consent, I'm. it's their choice what to do with their bodies. He, he's writing things down. Cool, awesome. What about the social aspect of it? Let's say that, you know, as you said, they were able to do this in a way that was very safe for the Pokemon. But socially, what exactly do you think would happen if everyone had the option of, I guess, genetically deciding what sort of traits to put on their Pokemon? And naturally, people tend to gravitate towards really strong or very positive uh, positive uh, genetics. Um, there is a concern that then only the wealthy or the rich are able to possess um, Pokemon of this of this stature. And the, ter the, the term pay to win 
is right now being used uh, amongst the Pokemon League. Thoughts on that? Well, there would have to be different categories. You can't enter enhanced genetically Pokemon with Pokemon who do not have that enhancement. That's simply unfair. It's the same reason why um, I presume that we have um, Pokemon who suffer amputation and stuff or get injuries um, that affect their performance specific with others who suffer similar, similar in injuries and such for a fair playing field. He nods a little bit. Our Pokemon awesome. with mix. And then he says, uh, just a couple more questions. Um, are you familiar with Prism, Labor Prism Labs? Uh, Prism Labs? Uh, it's spelled Prism or Prism as in the Prism, crystal? Prism, P-R-I-Z-M, Labs, L-A-B-Z. I know, it's kind of it's kind of an interesting way of spelling it. Prism Labs. Uh, you can roll a... That would be... That would be a knowledge roll. Knowledge... General? Uh, I would say technology education. Yeah, oh, this oh. is more technology education. Yeah, yeah roll me that. Whoa. <laughs> okay. Roll an 11. Okay, so... You actually know that uh, Prism Labs is actually a giant uh, science corporation uh, that is very that has actually um, been making a lot of very uh, very um, major advances to Pokemon studies and Pokemon genetics. Um, they actually were one of the first um, to unlock. Pokemon's uh, capabilities almost all across the board in Kanto way back um, probably back in like 50 years ago. So they've been around for a while. Um, they basically were able to unlock uh, Pokemon's potential so that originally Pokemon, at least domesticated, would only be able to uh, learn up to four moves. Now most domesticated Pokemon can learn up to six moves thanks to Prism Labs. Oh. So that's what you know. I've, okay, I'll just um, spout that information out to the guy and go, um, yeah. Oh, so you're very quite, um, notorious. Well, Prism Labs right now um, is making a very interesting study, at least rumor has it, that they are trying to unlock the quote unquote shiny gene. Uh, they essentially are trying to make it so that uh, Pokemon that are bred domestically would have a higher chance of becoming shiny versus not shiny. Now, we all know that Pokemon shinies technically are not necessarily more powerful than those that are not shiny. They're just different looking. And of course, many in many Pokemon contests, shiny Pokemon tends to be a very heated debate as to whether or not they should take that into consideration during the scoring system. But at any rate, regardless of that, we wanted your thoughts on the idea of possibly bringing in more shiny Pokemon into the general population. I, as long as the research is ethical and well done, and there's a certain amount of choice involved, I presume they can they can bring more shinies in if they want. I, if it doesn't hurt anyone, what's the harm? Okay. Um, I even had once a shiny Pokemon. Oh, did you? What kind of shiny Pokemon did you have? Oh, um, uh, Umbreon. And you said you no longer have this Pokemon anymore? Yeah, there's a, there's a accent. Um, it's a long... It's, I'm you don't need to worry about very it. Very sorry to hear that. Uh, sorry, I just was just curious. Didn't mean to get into your personal life like that. I'm actually kind of done with my questions now. So um, thank oh, you. Good. I just need your name. Oh, uh, Nausicaa Sinclair. Nausicaa. You may call me Nor. Nor. Well, nice to meet you, Nor. Well, like I said, um, just let your manager know. Uh, that I'd be interested in okay. interviewing some of his customers here. Uh, of course, uh, if they um, are interested, if you could just sign this letter of consent, uh, I'll, I'll definitely uh, be excited to include you into my next piece. 
Um, okay, I'll, I'll just give us a read over first. And how was your scone? Oh, it's delightful. He says as he give it a munch. Gives it a munch. Um, Ooh, lovely. I also need. I was think, wondering if I could also get some tea as well. Oh, tea. Uh, what what flavor? It's for my boss. I honestly don't know what he likes. What do you prefer, black or white? Um, depends on the tea. If it's herbal, black. If it's black tea, um, I like a little bit of milk. Okay. Are you saying black is what you would prefer, I guess, in general? Yeah, there's more herbal teas out there than not herbal teas. I'll take a black then. Okay, I'll get a peppermint. Most people like peppermint. And it's refreshing, so... Thank you. All right. Cassie. You are in Pewter City still. Okay. You are still with your mom. And um, you... So one thing that I need to explain to everybody is that um, in Pewter City, this is where the Kearney family lives. Now, the Kearneys, it's a husband and wife and their children, their two daughters. And um, the Kearneys are actually two of the most powerful politicians in all of Kanto region. So they have a very large house. They're extremely well off. And um, they are actually fairly well known in the region for being, um, in, uh, being one of the um, Pokemon champions in the Pokemon League. So they're almost like celebrities in that sense. And um, Cassie, you, one of their daughters, you are, she's the closest that you have to a friend, I guess. I, I think they could call them friends, yeah. You can call them friends. Okay, so you are friends with, um, her full name is Ginevra. Ginevra is her full name. I'm, I'm correcting what I called her before. Um, G Ginevra um, Helen Kearney. She basically asked you to meet her at her place um, because she has something for you that you requested of her. You actually um, needed to get your, you find your way into Team Rocket. Mm -hmm. um, she knows a guy who knows a guy who knows the mother of a guy <laughs> who uh, has connections that has allowed her to find an application for you into the Team Rocket. Of the guy. Yes. So she basically says that she has the application, and she, you know, she, you know, she she just needs you to come over and pick it up at her house. Okay. So did she just like call or text or something just now? Yeah, she just texted you. Okay. Well then, yeah, she'll head out. She'll call to her mom that she's going to see Jenny, and then just be on her way. Your mom doesn't respond, so you go over to the kitchen, and um, there's a note on the fridge, no in the fridge, um, saying that um, she had to go out and run some some errands. Um, if you want, there's like some leftover <laughs> chicken nuggets or something, like leftover chicken nuggets in the fridge if you want something to nibble on for dinner. Um, and by chicken nuggets, I guess it's it's it would be. Combuskin nuggets? Combuskin nuggets? <laughs> combuskin. There's some combuskin nuggets in the... Spicy. It's really spicy. Tor chicken nuggets. Tor chicken nuggets. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. So she'll, like, stifle a bit of a sigh saying that, but then just take the note down, turn it over on the counter, and scribble going to Jen's. Okay. And then just leave that there. All right. <laughs> They're a note-leaving family. <laughs> yes. You go over to the Kearney, uh, to the Kearney estate. Now, like I said, they are on probably like a five acre, like land, like five acre massive land. Um, okay. Gated, gated, there's a big giant gate around it. There's a long driveway, um, which is for their limo. Um, and um, you buzz yourself in, the gates will open. Um, and then you go over to the front door. Um, it's this beautiful, beautiful house with lots of topiary gardens, very well manicured. And um, the door will open and uh, it is uh, their butler. 
Um, and the butler looks towards you and says, Miss Cassandra, I presume. You are here to see Madame Geneve, Ginevra. Yeah, is she busy? I believe she is in her quarters upstairs. Cool. Well, I know my way. So if he will allow, she'll just, you know, nod in thanks and step past. All right. Um, you will come in. Uh, uh, as you know, no shoes are allowed in the house. So you, you politely remove your shoes, put them on the side, and make your way up the grand staircase and into uh, Ginevra's room. Her room right now is, is ajar. That's a tiny room. No, okay. Um, so she'll just go to the door and just, you know, do a little rap with her knuckles and then poke her head inside. Okay. Um, when you poke your head, she actually is on her way to the door. And she says, you're here. Come in, come in, quick, quick. <laughs> all right, well, she'll glance back, you know, a little more nervous just based upon how she's acting, but step in all the time. She things. shuts the door behind you. Uh, she shuts the door behind you, and then, you know, she goes over to the curtains, and then she, like, closes the shades a bit. She says, Okay. It took me a little bit of... It took me it took me a little bit of time, but... I got it, she says. And she holds up um, this, uh, this document here, and you can see, like, the Team Rocket symbol trade, like, watermarked on it. Um... <laughs> Subtle. Yes, and uh, she she hands it over. She hands it over to you. Okay. So, are you sure about this, though, Cassie? I mean, Team Rocket, aren't they like I don't know terrorists or something? So in the meantime, you know, she'll be glancing over it and then just say, "Well, I'm less sure now that you're saying all this, but you know the situation. You know what it's like at home right now." Yeah, I do. Which is why I'm guessing your mom doesn't know that uh, that you're doing this, right? Well, of course she doesn't know. She'd freaking kill me if she knew. Yes. Well, my mom would 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 kill me too if she found out that I got this for you. So we did not have this conversation. Speaking of, how did you get this? I told you. I got a friend. I got a guy who knows a guy. I got a guy who knows a guy. His, whatever. His mother and all that good stuff. I I just I don't ask them how they got it. I just get the ball rolling and yeah. 